Joining us by Polycom from Syracuse, New York, is Caitlin, a 26-year-old college track and field coach. Welcome, Caitlin. Hi. Now, are you anxious to hear the results of your test, sweetie? Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to finally uh, knowing what's going on. Oh, I, I bet you are. So what's going on with Caitlin? So when Caitlin first came to me, as she said in the piece, she had been having irregular periods for years. And as you and I both know, a lot of women don't know that your period or your menstrual cycle really is, should be looked at like a vital sign. And for a lot of women, they might only get five periods a year, and to them, that might be normal. But you and I know that is not normal. You really do need to have a period pretty much every month. And obviously, Caitlin had not been having one. She had been told in the past that she had some blood hormone levels that were suggestive of polycystic ovarian syndrome, which, by the way, affects anywhere from six to 25% of teenagers and adult women. The other thing that's really important to know is that it really is a spectrum. So you can have a mild form of it, you can have a moderate form of it, or you can have a severe form. Not every patient walks into our offices with a sign saying, I'm severe, I'm the classic PCOS patient. So our job is to really have a high index for suspicion, test for it as best as we can, because there's no one definitive test for it. And when we do that, it's based on what the patient tells us, so that we call that the history, their physical exam, so whether we see any abnormal hair patterns, abnormal acne patterns, mm -hmm. a pimple on the face once in a while is okay, back or chest for women is really not okay. And then blood tests and ultrasound, and we kind of put all of that together, we try to figure out if that's what's going on. Right, and usually what we do is we start with the hormones because you want to make sure it's not other things like thyroid problems. You want to make sure that this is the diagnosis because a lot of people will just throw it out there or they'll just throw birth control pills at a woman Absolutely. and say, here, it's going to be your hormones. And, and then there's other things that you can do, like you did an ultrasound, and even though polycystic ovarian syndrome is actually sort of a misnomer because you can still have what's called these cysts, and that's even a misnomer because it's usually follicles on the ovary, right. um, which are sacs filled with fluid, but they have hormonal properties. And the other thing is, Lisa, as you know, that term PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is probably not the best term. A lot mm -hmm. of women who get that diagnosis walk around thinking their ovaries are huge and filled with cysts. They don't really have to be. They can look completely normal on ultrasound, right. and they can still be, as we say, cystic and, and be overactive. And I think that really that's the best way to understand this syndrome is that it's just a hormonal imbalance. Your ovaries are a little overactive, mm -hmm. and we want to find out if that's what's going on because it can have some serious health consequences if it's not managed properly. One of the reasons to detect this is not so much about fertility, even though that's what a lot of women are concerned about, but because we know that they're going to be you know, a lot more susceptible to diabetes down the line. Yep. And even certain types right. of cancers, like uterine cancer. So I think the name of the game is if you think that this affects you or if you're given this diagnosis, really look at it like the glass is half full. Once you know about it, then you can be really proactive about managing it, making sure it doesn't give you the symptoms, the acne and the uh, excessive body hair and, and protecting your uterus and protecting your fertility and most importantly down the road reducing the chances of things like diabetes because that's the name of the game. You want a long-term health and wellness.